All right. It looks like we have hit quorum for this meeting. Um, just as a reminder, if you did not sign in on paper or if you not have not yet signed in on Zoom, um, please make sure you do that so we can count you as present. Um, and I think we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, so welcome, everyone. Um, I know that we have a few guests here today in addition to our normal crew. So if you don't know me, my name is Katie Heath. I am the Senior Vice President for GPSG, so welcome. Um, I am going to call this meeting to order at 5.39. Um, and we are going to start by approving our agenda, uh, agenda for today's meeting. Yep, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I have a, a quick amendment. I'd like to motion to amend the agenda to include 54-033 um, increased town hall budgets to the legislative agenda. Do I hear a second? Second. Any objections? Um, I would object, but it, only in, in good faith here. Yeah, I would object that we include the other pieces of legislation that are also in the so legislation folder. So that's not, I think, germane to this particular motion. Um, we can do an additional motion for that after we resolve this motion. Um, so um, any additional objections to this motion? All right, um, so that will pass by unanimous consent. Um, do you have an all additional right. motion, Nick? Yes, I would like the motion to include all the other pieces of legislation that have not been included in today's agenda. All right. Does I think of, we should list point of those. clarification. Yeah, could we get a list of those legislation, yes. please? Um, yeah, I can list them out. It's 54 031 travel awards, 54 032 external appointments, and then 54 034 the appropriations of March. All right, so the motion is to amend the agenda to include these three additional bills. Um, do I hear a second? Um, any objections? Hearing none. All right. Um, we will continue on. Thank you, everyone. Um, so we are going to start off today with a speaker that we have invited, um, who I'm very, very excited to have with us. Um, Beth Meyer Davis from the Graduate School is here to talk a little bit about the Graduate Student Experience Initiative, which um, if you have not heard about already, is a super, super cool initiative that the graduate school um, is working on in partnership with a lot of graduate and professional students. So I will invite her to come up here and, and speak to you all. All right, the pressure's on. Something was called super, super cool. Man, <laughs> I will try to deliver. And you should just be able to click this arrow right here to okay. move forward. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, um, so I really am so glad to be able to have a little bit of time to present this initiative to all of you. Um, and really the heart and soul of this graduate student experience initiative is why I took this job as Dean of the Grad School about 18 months ago. Um, you know, which is to say, I've been here at Carolina for some 16, 17 years. I still have a doctoral student who I talked to today, actually, um, you know, and meeting with her about her research and her progress to dissertation and so forth. So I know firsthand that the graduate and professional students here at UNC Chapel Hill are truly amazing people who will do incredible things in our world. So it matters to me a lot in my role that we really think carefully and deeply about how we are providing graduate and professional education here on our campus. So that's what's behind all of this. Lauren has been an amazing partner um, and highly involved with all of this. And that's been just terrific. I know that'll continue you know, over time. Um, and so I'm just really happy to be able to present this to you. So I'm gonna go through uh, these, the slide set. You'll notice the date on the slide, which is February the 23rd. It is not February the 23rd today, um, but I wanted to present to you the same slides that I presented to faculty council. So what I'm presenting today, what I'm saying today, it's what faculty have heard. It's, um, I think I did a little bit of an update to these slides um, from when I otherwise presented to the faculty executive committee. Um, Interim Chancellor Lee Roberts has heard about this. 
Um, actually, in my first one-on-one -on -one with him, he was very interested and invited me also to present to the Chancellor's Joint Cabinet meeting. So that group has heard about this as well. And it's only the timing of when this particular meeting was scheduled, um, you know, that I'm speaking to you now. So um, th this really is something that we're taking very seriously. We're putting it out there um, and it's work that we are already um, heavily engaged in. So I'm gonna go through these slides and then after that, um, there'll be however many minutes I'm allowed, um, you know, for some, some Q and A, which I look forward to. Okay, so, um, so the overall charge of this initiative um, is to conduct an assessment of the graduate and professional student experience to make sure that we have appropriate policies and practices, emphasis on practices in place to ensure that balance of academic rigor and student success and well being. That's that balance that we want. You're here at UNC Chapel Hill for a reason. Um, you know, the, the caliber of the work here, the scholarship here is very, very high, and that need not be compromised when we engage in graduate education with, a, with also an emphasis on well being. So those two things can go hand in hand, and that's the goal. So we want to pay particular attention to. Um, essentially the student working conditions as you serve as teaching assistants or research assistants. What does that really mean? What's underneath all of that? And where that is coming from is when you take a couple of steps back and you look at the rates of depression and anxiety in young adults in general, that's, uh, those, those prevalences and incidences have been going up over quite a few years, well before COVID hit, and that same phenomenon is even elevated, amplified in graduate and professional students. So we know that there's a concern and there certainly have been many calls for increases in mental health, counseling, wellness, and so forth. The question is, yes, those services might be needed to be expanded, certainly. But the question is why? What is it about how we are delivering graduate and professional education here at Carolina that could be improved? What are the drivers of the stress and distress that we have some control over? There are some things we don't have control over. You know, the, the political environment in which we live, you know, climate change, I mean, you know, economic pressures. I mean, there are a lot of pressures out there that impact um, that we can't do a lot about. But there are other aspects um, of your experience here that we can address. And so we want to figure out what those are, as well as understand what the services are that, that are needed. So as we go about this, uh, we thought we do want to focus on essentially what we're calling working conditions to, to sort of convey that notion that we're going to look under the hood and really think about drivers of distress and what can we do about those drivers. Um, we want to really focus on the full range of students that join our community, international students, online students, master students, doctoral students, um, individuals working in STEM areas, um, social sciences, arts, humanities. Um, there, there's a wide range of disciplines uh, represented um, in our student body, and that's a great strength. But we also recognize that there are differences in those drivers of stress. And so we're paying attention to those various subgroups of, of students and their experience. And so ultimately we wanna provide recommendations and implementation strategies once we identify uh, the issues that are underneath that hood so that we can improve the graduate and professional experience here. So the structure, so there's a steering committee um, and uh, an advisory board, and then five different working groups. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the membership of uh, this organization um, uh, just a, a little bit later, but just you can sort of put a picture of this um, in your mind. Uh, with regard to the working groups, um, uh, there's a teaching assistant working group um, and a, a research assistant working group focused in the disciplinary areas around basic science, STEM, professional. Um, schools, and then um, same thing duplicated for arts, humanities, and uh, social sciences, because, you know, issues can tend to be different for sort of obvious reasons. And then the fifth group is overall student life and wellness to really consider issues that um, really are across all the disciplinary areas. So it was so interesting to me 
Um, you know, because over the years of my career, I've led a lot of different kinds of groups, sometimes with community engagement, sometimes with patients. I'm a diabetes researcher in my scholarly history. Um, you know, in various leadership roles, I've been a department chair here, et cetera, et cetera. So I've worked with a lot of different groups of people um, and been in situations of trying to identify the common themes, come to consensus and so forth. This was like the weirdest, honestly, fastest, easiest experience in coming to consensus for what became um, the four areas of recommendation uh, that you see on this slide, which um, the steering committee came to, again, shockingly fast um, over just a couple of meetings. Um, and we presented those to the provost on February the 1st, and he has approved um, and endorsed um, these recommendations to go forward for our group to work on them. So the first is pretty simple, um, which is a campus research, or excuse me, resource navigation, um, because there actually are a lot of resources available on campus for graduate and professional students, but they're not necessarily well known and they're not sort of, you know, collected um, in a digital resource that's readily available for students or for faculty who have questions regarding students that they're concerned about or just for their own um, edification so that they can provide resource information to students. So you all might be familiar with the Heels Care. Um, that's another sort of you know, digital curation example, um, but this will be broader than that. Um, and so we're working on that actually already. That'll be hosted on the graduate school uh, website. The second recommendation is uh, for teaching assistant training. So how many of you have served um, as a TA or know that you will be soon? A lot of you, yes, most of you. Um, yeah, and how many of you had training by the time you set foot in the classroom? Some, like maybe a third or half, and some were like, ah, maybe I had training. <laughs> so, um, so one of the recommendations is to require TA training, which is to support graduate professional students when they get into the classroom. And that's with regard both to administrative issues, like what are the policies for absence? Do I need to get a university approved absence every time a student is out because they're ill or whatever? Um, you know, um, what do I do? Where do I go if, there, if I see that there's a student in my class that I'm concerned about? You know, how do you work Canvas when you're not the student? You know, I mean, just so there's just practical UNC things, you know, that you need to know. And then there's also, um, you know, just basics around pedagogy. How do you teach? How do you, you know, really facilitate learning? Um, and so we want students to have that confidence to be supported when they're entering that role as a TA and also to have clarity about how many hours should it take to be a TA, to serve as a TA? What are you really getting into? How do you plan your time accordingly? Um, so that's a recommendation, teaching assistant training. We already have quite a few opportunities for training for TAs, um, but it's not required um, and not staffed up to the level of meeting the needs of all the TAs. So um, actually this August, with our usual August overall orientation, which is on a Wednesday in August, the following Thursday, the next day, there's gonna be a half day TA orientation that will not be required at that point because um, you can only do so much so fast, but it'll be an opportunity for anyone, you, know, you don't have to be a new student, uh, for anyone to attend that, get started, um, and um, you know, then be um, ready to go, maybe with additional training and so forth. So the next, uh, the third of these recommendations um, assessment of mental health and well being services. So, we really want to look at the data on what is the current utilization of CAPS and of other services around uh, campus. Um, what are, uh, what really is the utilization? What's the demand? What are the wait times? Are there wait times for what services? Um, what's going on with our peer institutions in this regard? What are, what are other opportunities beyond CAPS that are available and perhaps not utilized through UNC Health, through community, et cetera. So we really feel like we need to understand better, um, you know, what is the landscape around um, mental health and well-being services 
And um, you know what? What again are sort of you know standard practices? What are other institutions doing, and so forth? We just need um, information um, in order to be able to then have some kind of data, some basis from which more specific recommendations can be made. Um, so that's the starting point on that one. Um, and then the fourth recommendation, and again, note the title of the slide. These are short term. Um, these are things we're going to work on initially. So the fourth of these is faculty mentor training. Um, as part of this, we'll require individual development plans or IDPs um, for all um, uh, master's students who are doing a research focused project and would have a thesis committee and for all PhD students who have a doctoral dissertation committee. Um, and many students are already doing these IDPs. There are some training grants, for example, NIH training grants that require this and SF is moving in that direction. It's certainly best practice, but not followed by all, not provided to all. And so the recommendation is to require those IDPs and as well to require mentor-mentee compacts in which it would be specified. What is the expected, what is the individually agreed upon frequency of mentor meetings? Um, you know, number of hours in a lab, for example, things like that. So it's very clear what the mutual expectations are. And those documents um, would be uploaded uh, through Connect Carolina. Um, and available over time um, to really help to ensure that clear communication between the student and their primary advisor in that research space. All right, so those are the four, first four things to work on. And so how are we doing that? So we have these working groups that I already showed you. And the charge for the working groups is to take a look at the data that would be relevant to the particular um, uh, project or recommendation and use that information, identify additional information that we don't have that we need to go get in order to inform the content, the strategies for implementation. Um, and then those uh, recommendations, that input will go to the steering committee and be filtered through then for um, ultimate actual implementation. And of course, as the work goes on, you know, Although the working groups will be focused on those four projects because you can't boil the ocean and get anything done, I'm very pragmatic. So <laughs> we wanna make sure we have enough focus to accomplish some things. But as new ideas come forward, we'll have a way to capture those ideas and continue to work on those, uh, those things over time. And who knows, something might come up that we decide is a very high priority that we would act on more quickly. And you know, we certainly can, can do that. And then this little table on the side just shows you sort of how um, the different working groups are mapped to those four recommendations, which is pretty straightforward. So in terms of membership and who's working on this, so we have something like, I think the latest count was 112 people involved in all of this. And I had to do, once again, shockingly little arm twisting, you know, to invite people uh, to attend. And actually it's um, uh, John Easterbrook, who um, wasn't able to be here today. He's the uh, Graduate School Executive Director for Strategic Initiatives. He put out lots of the invitations. So some of you actually, you know, might've already been in touch uh, with him. Are any of you actually on any of these working groups? Might not be in here. Yeah, we do have um, either someone from GPSG or um, um, the Chancellor's uh, uh, advise, you know, graduate student advisory committee or other graduate students that have either volunteered, come to our attention, were um, suggested to us. So each of the groups that you saw on that figure in terms of the organization has a graduate and professional student voice present because we have to hear from you all the time throughout this process. Um, so that's um, and that was part of how we wanted to be intentional. We also have representation from the college, all three divisions, and from every one of the other schools on campus and a number of the um, various campus-wide offices. Um, so the working groups are close to final now, um, and you can see a little bit more about membership there. 
Um, we also have um, a good amount of resources to help us work efficiently, because we're, we're really making every effort to make sure that work happens um, effectively uh, so that we actually can make specific progress and not just have people sitting around talking, uh, which is lovely, but not helpful, particularly. Um, so we have a chancellor's fellow who's been doing a wonderful job helping us pull information together. Uh, the graduate school team is sort of doing a lot of work behind the scenes um, in terms of communication, coordination, you know, um, sort of back of the house coordination, uh, infrastructure stuff. We also have um, a group called the Abacus Evaluation Team. They're actually embedded as part of the School of Medicine um, tracks uh, um, group. And they do excellent work in terms of um, project evaluation, uh, data collection, um, data analysis, things like that. So we have really good support to uh, manage all sorts of data. It turns out that there's already a lot of survey data. And in fact, today, like right now, as you're sitting you know, with your computers, you could pop on to the graduate school website and look under data and see the results of our exit survey, which we've been doing for many years. There's a lovely dashboard there and you can just go look at it like right now um, and get all kinds of information. Um, that's a survey that you all will be required to fill in before you, it's part of, as part of graduation clearance, actually, you know, because we want to make sure that we're hearing regularly from students. And we've been doing that for, you know, I don't know how many years. And so between that campus climate survey and quite a number of other sources, we actually already have a lot of information. And so the Abacus group is helping to sort of um, curate that information so the working groups can effectively access that and use it. Um, and then uh, there's an operational excellence team um, that I think reports to the vice chancellor for finance, um, but they're very good at just facilitating, you know, this kind of work really in sort of the, you know, project management, project change, change management kind of venue. And so they're providing some guidance in terms of, you know, again, working effectively and efficiently. Um, just here's a rough timeline. I think this is my last slide. Yes, it is. Um, and, you know, uh, I always like to do a slide where you can already check that you did something. So that first one was getting the recommendations to the provost. Um, and so the work will unfold. And what I wanna point out to you here is this fall of 2025 column where you see a lot of ongoing, 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 because we're building this initiative to not just be one and done, but to make sure that we're embedding solutions into our systems deeply in terms of what goes into Connect Carolina? What are our ongoing processes, including um, aspects of annual review for faculty, appointments, promotions, and tenure criteria? So we're really trying to bake in the solutions that we come to in a way to our systems that really will be sustainable and that will continue with this process of really wanting to understand the best ways um, to provide graduate and professional education here at Carolina. So that is my story. And um, I really am just so pleased with the collaboration um, from GPSG. It's just been a joy uh, you know, to work together on this and the collaboration all across campus, the support from the provost, the support from the interim uh, chancellor um, has been very rewarding, very welcome. Um, so I feel very optimistic about this. It's a lot of work to be done. Um, we may have pockets of resistance out there. I don't need mentor training. I've been mentoring doctoral students for 30 years. Well, that's all right. Here's your training. <laughs> and you can't be on the committee until you do it. Thank you very much. You know, so that's okay. We can deal with that. All right. So that's what I wanted to present. And um, I'm happy to take any questions or any comments, any suggestions. Yeah. What sort of um, data collection mechanisms are you all putting in place to ensure that you're getting review on implementation of policies going forward? Are you planning to continue to survey the grad student body and do things like the campus climate survey and maybe ask about these sorts of initiatives on the exit surveys as well? Yeah, sure. Thank you for that question. Um, so 
so we do have, as I mentioned, the uh, graduate student exit survey, and that's been in place a long time. We have some questions there that are required by Association of American Universities, um, and we can add to that. That's an efficient way to you know, collect data. That's just an exit survey. So we're talking now about um, a current student survey to get information from um, students on a regular basis when they've been here for maybe a year or so and would have important feedback. So we haven't decided exactly how we're going to do that yet, um, but that is something we have our eye to because we do need to continue systematically to get that feedback, absolutely. Yeah, and we'll be building metrics out for all of these things like ways to track percent of, of TAs who receive their training, um, you know, making sure that we don't approve a doctoral dissertation committee unless we have evidence, check, check, that training was done, you know, that IDPs were complete, things like that. So that's part of what I meant, that accountability piece is part of what I meant by baking into our systems. It means not just availability of the activities that we're talking about, but accountability for completion. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Hello. Um, first of all, I really appreciate you talking about um, working conditions as a major kind of consideration in, in uh, grad students' well being. I was wondering, could you, do you know how many grad students are in the membership of these, this body? Like how many grad students are in each of the? Yeah, working out groups? of the 112 ish. I don't know, but there are, I don't, Lauren, do you know? I mean, there's at least a couple on every one of those work groups. Um, yeah, I would say at least, at least two on every work group and more. Actually there's, yeah, because more- And are there five working groups? Yeah. So there's at least 10 out of the 120 are grad students? At least, I, I actually think it's more than that. I can find out. Okay, I can. Yeah. I can find out. Um, and then a suggestion is uh, perhaps another way to gather information is to talk to the grad student union about concerns that maybe people have felt comfortable reporting to the union, but not through a body like this. Yeah, I mean, I am absolutely open to any and all sources of input. So, absolutely, yeah, we can. Thank you. Get that connection. Yeah, thank you for that suggestion. I appreciate it. Is that it? Okay, awesome. Everyone, please, um, please join me in thanking um, Dean uh, Beth Meyer Davis for joining us. Thank you so much for coming. All right, we shall continue. Those slides will, by the way, be shared um, and posted on Heal Life. Um, along with the normal slides. I did also want to mention, I got this question earlier about um, some of the legislation being posted. Uh, it is actually, so it's been posted now on Key Life under 54th. If you go to, so you go to documents, Senate, 54th session, seventh meeting, March. It should be under that folder. I can repeat that again, too, if that was confusing. All right. Um, um, we're now going to be moving into open forum. I did have one person pre-sign up for open forum. Um, I don't know where my phone is. I did get a text. Let me, that she actually might not be able to hear. Is Gina here? Okay, I think she may have had to have left early. Okay, um, so we now um, will, are in open forum. Um, if you, I, I know there have been a few people that have expressed interest in speaking during open forum. Um, this is an opportunity for constituents to um, speak. You'll have two minutes. Um, open forum is limited to a 20 minute in total um, amount of time. Um, I wish I had my phone, so I might have to ask someone else to time it because I don't know where my, do you, Oh, I totally forgot. Yes, absolutely. I um, absolutely forgot that um, the GPC president, Lauren Hawkinson, needs to leave early and actually needs to do her announcements. So let's go ahead and do that now while I attempt to find my phone so that we can have a, a timer. Thanks, Katie. Sorry to 
Sorry to um, throw the agenda for a loop. Um, first, I just want to congratulate both Ben King and Katie Heath for their campaigns for GPSG president next year um, and congratulate Katie on her election as um, president elect for GPSG for the next school year. Um, if you are interested in serving in an executive board or cabinet role, um, please apply. Um, those applications are live and the link to apply for those positions can be found in the graduate student newsletter that was sent out earlier today, right, Luke? Cool. Um, okay, in the notes for today too, great. Um, I have two things that are really, really important. First of all, I'm sure you've heard by now that a graduate student, graduate and or professional student is not going to be represented on the chancellor's search committee. So we will not be on that team. Um, however, President Hans has said over and over that he's going to make sure there are ample, op ample opportunities for us to have our voices heard. So my first, plea to you all is to show up for those listening sessions. We need to show administration, not only here at UNC, but across the UNC system that graduate and professional students care, and we are going to make our voices heard. So please show up to the listening sessions, encourage your constituents to come to the listening sessions. Now, along those lines, of course, these listening sessions and other forums need to be held at times and in ways that are accessible for graduate and professional students. So I received an email a couple of days ago, actually yesterday, from Anita Brown Graham, who is on the search committee. And she is, not, she is serving as a liaison between the search committee and campus. And so she reached out to me and we have a, a meeting scheduled for the 14th. Um, and she wants to hear um, about ways to ensure that they are creating meaningful opportunities to allow for our voices to be heard. So in order for me to give her good information on what those opportunities for our voices to be heard look like, I need to hear from, from all of you. And I'm not gonna put you on the spot and ask you to tell me that right now, but before March 14th, please, get in contact with me, email me, let me know what types of forums you'd like to see, how you'd like to see those delivered in person, online, what times you'd like them to be held. Um, because I really, really wanna make sure that there are good numbers of us that are able to attend and let the committee know what, what our needs are in a new chancellor. So that's number one important. Um, number two, um, there is currently a well-being day committee that is being convened. Um, and I was reached out to earlier today by a member of the provost's office asking for GPSG um, or a graduate or graduate professional student representation on that committee. Um, what they are doing um, is looking at, they are assessing the utility and the impact of well-being days on various members of the campus community um, and on the academic calendar. Not sure exactly what all that entails, but again, I think this is a really another really important venue for graduate and professional students to have their voices heard. Um, specifically, she's looking for a member, a, a graduate or professional student um, who is connected to a research lab as they're aware that there are quite a few conflicts between research lab expectations and utilizing wellness days. So in that same vein, um, if you um, or someone you know, so reach out to your constituents, let them know that this opportunity is available to serve on this Wellbeing Day Assessment Committee. Um, if you could please, again, let's make, we'll make the deadline for that the same by March 14th, let me know so that I can get back to them. Um, this committee, this Wellbeing Day Committee, will um, they anticipate their work being done by the end of this this spring semester. So um, if you are going to be here through this spring, if you're even if you're graduating in May and want to want to be a part of this, please let me know. Um, so those are my two important announcements. Again, I'm just going to hammer home again, Chancellor Search Committee. We need to make our voices heard, show up in large numbers, and let's not get left off of this committee again. Did you have a question, Chris? Okay. 
Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Fernando Quijano from Business uh, PhD. Actually, a point of clarification, I was just looking through the numbers. We represent more than a third of the student body. Yes. So that's why it's important that even if we might not be seen as engaged as the undergrads might be, mm -hmm. we still represent a very sizable and representative part of this community, mostly compared to other universities and other of our peers. Um, so as you say, I just wanted to help inform everything you're saying by that fact. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, that fact has been made known to um, President Hans and other members of the UNC system. Um, and so, yes, thank you for hammering that home once again. <laughs> awesome. Thank you all. Thanks, Lauren. I will mention that um, participation on any of that, if it does happen before our last Senate meeting, will count for participation points. So if you really needed another reason to participate, there is one. Um, all right, back to where we were. Um, okay, we're now gonna move into open forum. Um, is there anyone here who would like to be recognized for open forum? I see one hand here, one hand here. Are there any hands on Zoom also? Nope. Okay. Um, if while you're, um, when you, uh, start to speak, if you can introduce yourself, um, make sure you hold, there's like a button on that microphone and just hold the, the button down so that, uh, we can hear you. Um, and, um, you've got two minutes, but you do not need to use all of it or, you know, how, however you'd like. So, um, So the camera will actually move to you. Um, and so is that, I see what you're saying. You can move however you want. I mean, it's, it's however you want to do it. Um, you can take one of those microphones. Test. Make sure you hold the button down. All right, uh, can I start now? All right, so my name is Mitchell Pinsky. Um, some of you guys might remember me from, so I used to be a senator uh, for city regional planning, but I stepped down due to a class conflict. Some of you guys might remember the first week that I spoke about the importance of making sure that Jewish students felt safe. Since October 7th, the majority of Jewish students have not felt safe. This resolution over here makes zero mention of the atrocities that Hamas perpetrated on October 7th. I was in Israel in December. Everyone there is still reeling from the beheadings, from the rape, from the mutilation that Hamas, a genocidal terrorist organization whose explicit charter, charter okay, a minute, has made it explicit that they want the Jewish homeland of Israel gone, and then they want Jews killed. In fact, instead of calling for a ceasefire resolution, which, by the way, Hamas continues to reject, um, call for the hostages to come home, the over 130 hostages to come home. And what also struck me about this resolution was to ensure current educational, occupational, and social conditions that are conducive to uh, what? Okay, so I guess no matter what you say, Israel will continue to do what it will to protect itself in Am Yisrael Chai. All right, um, and we had one other speaker as well. Um, do, you could just stay there if it, or you can, okay, sure. Um, just make sure you introduce yourself and hold down the button while you're speaking. 
Um, but you can go ahead when you're ready. Okay, great. Can y'all hear me okay? Awesome, thank you. My name is Liv Lynn. Um, I'm a student in public health and social work. Um, and first, I want to thank you all for allowing me the chance to speak and devoting your time and energy to serving graduate and professional students um, in this capacity. I'm here to ask you to pass the ceasefire and divestment resolution. Um, as a grad student in two departments, I know that this resolution is something that people, um, your constituents, graduates, and professional students have been seeking for, longing for, after many, many months of watching this horrific violence unfold. In the School of Social Work, we, we circulated a petition in the fall calling on our department to acknowledge the genocide and prepare us for the social work implications of it. This petition received over 200 signatures and we were met with stonewalling from our administration and in departments across Gillings, including health behavior, equity, epidemiology, nutrition, students are organizing to educate ourselves and ask for programming from our departments. We heard from one department chair that they had not acted sooner because they didn't feel they had a mandate from student government. Divided amongst our departments, dealing individually with faculty who are afraid to lose their jobs for saying what's right in the privacy of their own offices, grad and professional students are facing immovable brick walls. And I'm asking you to use the power we gave you with our votes to help us move them. The genocide in Palestine is a social work issue. It is a public health issue. It is an issue of academic freedom. And finally, ceasefire and divestment are Jewish issues. To be clear, it is my Judaism that obligates me to ask this of you in the decades long tradition of Holocaust survivors, rabbis and Jews across the diaspora who are doing the same. Please hear me when I say that it is less safe for me to be Jewish on a campus that does not have moral clarity about genocide and that one Jew does not speak for all Jews, but I speak for myself and many, many of my fellows when I say that this resolution is very important for Jewish safety on campus. Please use your position to listen to us and pass this resolution today. Thank you so much. All right. Um, with that, um, I don't believe we had anyone else. I didn't forget anyone, correct? Yes, um, okay. So that is going to end open forum. Um, we now are going to move into um, some new business. Um, we, I, let me pull this up really quick, sorry. Um, can't find it. Um, our president pro temp, um, Lauren Rackley, unfortunately had to step down from her position because of personal reasons. Um, and she wanted me to express to you all that um, she uh, found GPSG to be a joy and it was one of her favorite parts of being here. Um, and thank you all for uh, uh, doing the work with her. Um, we do um, now need to select a new president pro temp. Um, so we will now go through a nomination period. Um, I'm happy to answer questions if anyone has questions about the position. Um, it will literally be from now until the end of the next meeting. So it will not last, um, it's a pretty short one. Um, so I, we will now open up a nomination period. Um, are there any nominations for this position? Uh, Kendall Winter Musicology, I will self-nominate. Do I need to speak any more to that? Um, are there any other nominations? Um, I'd like to nominate Senator Ben King to be president pro tempore. Right. Um, ben, are, are you here? And is he, do you know if he's in the Zoom meeting? Okay. Hey, yeah, I'm here. Um, I tested positive for COVID like an hour before the Senate meeting, so sorry. I'm sorry that you're sick. Um, I will say, Ben, I don't believe that you can both serve as chair of RNJ and as president pro temp, um, which if I am totally fine if you would like to nominate yourself for this and then sort of simultaneously step down as RNJ chair. Um, that is totally something that you can do, but I just did want to make you aware that um, you can't currently serve in both of those positions. So. Yeah, I, I'm, I'd be fine with um, Kendall doing it. I know she's got a lot more experience than I do. And with only, like you said, a month or two left, I think she'd do well in that role. Yeah, Kendall. Could I ask a question? Absolutely. I am on a committee. Does that preclude it's, it? No, it's because the chair is a stipended position. You can't be double stipended. Okay. Okay, then I will... Yeah. All right, then my self-nomination stands. 
Ben, I had a little bit of a hard time hearing you there at the end. Um, did you say that I didn't quite hear what, what you said at the end? Sure. Um, I mean, I didn't nominate myself, but if Riley wanted to withdraw that nomination, I'd be happy to support Kendall. All right. Any other nominations, questions, comments, concerns? All right. Um, I think we can probably do a voice vote for this. Um, so um, we will now hold a, vote, a voice vote for um, the confirmation of Senator Kendall, Dr. Senator Kendall Winter Musicology um, for uh, President Pro Temp. Um, let's uh, go ahead and do a, a voice vote. I don't think we'll have a problem. Um, so all in favor, um, please say aye. Aye. I'm giving people on Zoom a moment if they want to say aye. Aye. All right, um, all opposed? Um, uh, any abstentions? Said that weird. Okay, seeing none, um, uh, congratulations, uh, President Pro Temp Winter on joining as uh, in this new position. Thank you so much. Um, okay, um, we are now gonna move on to the selection of the two vacant standing committee membership positions. Um, we still have a vacancy on the Finance Committee and a vacancy on the Rules and Judiciary Committee that we would like to fill. Um, this would require you to go to literally one meeting, basically, at this point, at the end of the year. So um, are there any nominations for anyone that would like to join one of these committees at this time? Ando Quijano, PhD in Business. I self-nominate for those. <laughs> uh, which one? You, I think you can do that technically. Nominate my, yeah, I nominate myself for RNJ then. <laughs> okay, for RNJ, great. Any other nominations? All right, um, upon seeing no um, contesting, I think you got it. So thank you so much, Fernando, for doing that. Um, we will, Ben is chair and we'll get in contact with you about the one meeting left or so. Great. Um, okay, um, we will, I did just get a text from Chris who wants to go ahead and give his um, uh, updates for the day um, because he has to leave early. So Chris, uh, if you, all you can introduce yourself if you want, but go ahead. Happy to. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm the Sumo Money President. I um, want to, of course, congratulate Katie and Ben as well. Um, and Julia Taylor as well. She'll be the new Sumo Money President starting a early April, I think, Inauguration Day. So looking forward to both Katie and Julia's term. Um, I have a few remarks today. Um, so i um, peddling I guess what Lauren didn't talk about it, but my administration is going to be doing a charity pickleball tournament for SHAC, um, which is the Student Health Action Coalition. Um, I'm doing this for a few reasons, but SHAC's just an amazing resource. Um, I think it'd be a great opportunity to support equitable and appropriate access to healthcare on campus and kind of help combat like inside queerness on campus as well. Um, so I'm super excited for this event. We've been working very, very hard. Um, it'll be on March 23rd from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. The link to register is going to go live on the 15th, I believe, of March. Um, there's gonna be a $15 registration fee for a team of two, but 100% of the proceeds will go straight to Shaq, which is super, super exciting. Um, I, we're also working on kind of turning it into a broader event around physical and mental wellness. So if any of you are in any organizations that deal with mental wellness and wanna give your materials or information or whatever to share with student body, please let me know. Um, I was trying to like reserve half the tickets for grad students, but there's no system that can do that. So please just come out. We would love to see you all. Um, we'd love to see y'all kind of go against the undergrads as well. So it can be super, super fun if you play. I'm um, just so looking forward to having that publicized. I'll make sure I'll follow up um, with Luke and have things publicized um, in the grad channels as well. Um, we're also working on our distinguished lectureship, which will be the last event in my administration. And we just kind of made that a grad partnership as well. So I guess the last event for mine and the Hawkinson administration, um, still ironing out those last few details really looking forward to sending us both out with a bang, I guess. Um, and then wanting to also speak to the Chancellor Search Committee. Um, I know there's a lot of frustration around that. Um, I think I 
carry a lot of guilt um, with that. I mean, I will say I, I've had so many conversations with President Hans about that and have really advocated for the need to have graduate representation on that. So I want to be very clear about that. Um, and I, I see and share those frustrations as well. Um, so I want to encourage you all to please show up as well um, in all the public forums. I have a meeting scheduled after spring break about how to create a survey that can kind of collect and gauge student priorities. I don't think that's not the main one, but that's just the first step they're taking. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to having that meeting in the next few weeks. Um, I know this isn't preferred, but I want to ensure you all that I'm going to serve well and hope to do right by you all, um, both grads and undergrads and, and all the other folks who want to be represented. So I'm sorry, but I am really trying and I wanted to, to say that as well. Um, but I'm happy to take any questions about anything and everything, if anyone has anything. Great, thank you so much, Chris. I um, I know we all are looking forward to um, seeing the last little bit of what you got to left to do. It'll be great. Um, okay, um, we are now going to move to the introduction of legislation. Um, I thought it was pertinent and relevant to just go back over a little bit uh, some general decorum, um, just given sort of the topics we're talking about today. So I did make a couple of slides just as a reminder. Um, uh, just as a reminder, myself, the presiding officer, is going to be responsible for preserving order and preserving decorum. So um, I promise if I uh, use my gavel, I don't mean to be mean. I'm just trying to preserve uh, kind of decorum here in this body. Um, I ask that all senators and attendees please address each other respectfully. Please seek recognition before speaking. Um, and before replying to something, um, please um, keep to rules of debate. Please um, just remember to maintain an environment that promotes justice, inclusion, and equality for everyone. Um, and please uh, maintain professionalism. Uh, additionally, um, I ask, so um, in general, you can refer to uh, senators, other members by name, um, but we will. I will not accept any der uh, derogatory remarks, anything reflecting personally upon them, upon their intentions, um, or anything like that, and I will cut you off. Um, additionally, um, just some more reminders about debate. Um, I, our standard rules are really long, so I tried to keep the most important stuff up here, but um, in general, as a reminder, um, there is a no limitations about the amount of time that a member may speak during discussion. Um, and there is no uh, limit on the amount of time for consideration of that business. However, um, a motion could be made to limit debate, which must be approved by two thirds of the member of the uh, present body. Um, please remember to, um, when you have speaking privileges, uh, please keep it germane to the business at hand. Um, I ask uh, if you have multiple questions, um, I will ask you to ask the first question, then we will go down the line of people who have not spoken, and then we can come back to your second question. Um, anything else important? Um, just a reminder that everyone here has freedom of speech and debate. They're not liable for impeachment or question upon the things that they say here. Um, Um, also, as a reminder, please remember to state your name and your unit every time you speak so that we know that for note taking purposes. Um, one other thing I did want to mention is if we do today have any motions, I know there was some concern in the past about the members on Zoom um, not feeling like the voice votes were really working. Um, so we are going to be doing roll call votes today for any motions um, that are basically not um, a consensus. Um, and so it will take a little extra time, but it will make sure that everyone on Zoom is able to properly have their voices represented. Um, lastly, please limit discussion in chat. I cannot look at chat. We do not have everyone moderating the chat and it's um, all discussion really should be happening um, over voice. So please remember to raise your hand. Uh, I will do my best um, to get to you as quickly as possible. Does anyone have any questions? I realize I just said a lot. Nothing. Anyone on Zoom have any questions? Okay, I will do my best. Everyone on Zoom, please be patient with me. Um, there's a bunch of you. Okay. Uh, Katie? There's a question? Yes, go ahead. Um, could, would it be possible for us? 
Uh, yes, uh, Joshua Bikita, Computer Science. Um, would it be possible to use um, hand votes rather than a roll call vote for, um, unless it is unclear from the hand vote? Yeah, I, that's actually, that. I would be fine with that if um, maybe we'll, we will do a voice vote including, and then it will be voice from those in person, hands from those on Zoom. If it's not clear what the consensus is, then we'll do roll call vote. I think that makes the most sense, right? I mean, we can do, so a hand vote can be done. In oh, you're thinking hand well. votes in here as so well? So you can do both on Zoom and in here. So anyone in favor, would everyone would raise hands on here and on Zoom, then you do all oppose on here. And on I, I think that makes sense. Um, let, we will do that for things that it's not close, basically. And then if it's close, we'll do roll call vote. We'll do that. Um, I, I agree. I think that is a little bit easier. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Okay, so we're now going to move on to the legislation for September. Um, the first, let me um, move to Canvas here so I can share all of this on screen. All right, can we see my screen okay? Yes, okay. Um, uh, the first bill we're going to be discussing is 54-029, a resolution to confirm Elizabeth Cohn, undergraduate student, as ticketing co-chair of the Carolina Athletics Association. Um, this is a bill that was referred to us, uh, first passed by in the undergraduate Senate, referred to the Joint Governance Council, and then referred back to the Senate because technically in the joint code, we are required to also confirm this student um, to the this position. Um, this is a formality. Um, like very much a formality that we do this approval. Um, this student has um, been very much vetted by the undergraduate uh, Senate. And um, I feel that they're, they have full confidence in this nominee. Um, and so I um, am now bringing this to you all for approval. Um, are there any, we'll move into discussion on this. Are there any questions about this? All right, good stuff. Efficient. Okay, um, we will now move to 54-030, uh, Gaza ceasefire and Israel divestment resolution. Um, I will begin by allowing the author of the bill to introduce um, the bill. Um, I, who is doing the introducing? Oh, okay, go ahead. Thank you, Katie, um, for giving me a few minutes. To can you can you introduce yourself too? Oh yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm Wynn Ebner. I'm from Health Behavior. Um, thank you for the introduction time. Um, well, we think that the language of the resolution speaks for itself. Um, so given that it is quite short, just about four pages long in the body of the text, um, I'd like to see my introductory time and ask that my fellow senators spend three quiet minutes rereading the resolution right now just to make sure that we're all discussing the content of the resolution. Um, and as we discuss, we encourage you as much as possible to refer to the specific language um, that you are engaging with. Um, and yeah, Hashim is going around and handing out copies um, if you want one to, to hold. And then I think also it was sent in the chat, in the chat of the Zoom, yeah. I'm not sure that this exactly makes sense, but I'll allow it. Um, the, the technical thing is I'd like to motion for a recess of three minutes. Do I hear a second? Objections? All right, we will now have a three minute recess. We will return at six, four, don't go anywhere, but we will return at 641 uh, from that recess. All right, it is now 6.41. Um, we will now return from recess. Um, sure, keep it quick though. Um, um, Hashem Amire, uh, Economics. I'm one of the authors of this legislation. Uh, I just wanna address two points that former Senator Pinsky um, that I think are mischaracterizations of the resolution. One, Senator Pinsky said that um, the resolution does not mention the hostages that were taken by Hamas. 
And if you look at section three, um, the resolution does call for the return of the hostages. Um, another thing is that um, Senator Pisky claimed that this resolution is one-sided and that it does not address the atrocities committed by uh, Hamas, and I would like to point you to section two, which condemns the targeting of civilians by all parties, and it does not specify or single out Israel. Thank you. Um, just a point for the, the notes. Um, uh, I do believe that uh, uh, the um, uh, Senator Pinsky did resign and is no longer currently a senator, so um, you might want to change it to former senator or maybe just leave that out completely. I'm um, Okay, perfect. Thank you. No worries, I just wanna make sure it was in the notes correctly. All right, um, so that ends um, introdu uh, the introduction of the bill. Um, we will now move into discussion. Um, and basically, the, I think the easiest way to do this is everyone who wants to talk, go ahead and throw your hands up. I'm gonna write everyone down and we'll go in the order that I see. Uh, are there any other, um, are there any hands on Zoom? I don't think I see any, but I want to make sure I'm not missing anyone. Yep. Yeah. Right, did I, I didn't miss anyone? Yeah, I put my hand up. We got you on the list. All right, um, let's go ahead and start first um, with uh, Fernando, you can go ahead. Fernando Quijano, Business PhD. Um, I've gone ahead and just enumerated some of the whereas to try to give more clarity to my comments. Um, seeing as on, for example, the fifth whereas, there's a clear um, citation or quotation to where this claim or who this claim is being, um, I, well, I, reference to here at the World Health Organization, Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, um, where is this four, six, um, seven do not include such citations. Um, so this, I, th I think it is not the intent of this body to say whether this is a fact or not, but rather to uh, communicate these uh, statements and this numbers from other uh, bodies. So it's similar as it's the language of whereas five, I believe whereas four, six, and seven should also include a reference to what authority is making this claim to be completely transparent to where the information is coming from. And that is not a statement being made by this body, but rather referencing another body, another body that is one, uh, for one, not us, because we are not informed to make this decision, but rather has um, authority and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They can believe the, um, anyway, um, legitimacy, there we go. The appropriate legitimacy to make this claim and not us as a body. And similarly with number eight, I would recommend and uh, suggest changing the wording to make it again a reference rather than statement. Um, um, can, do you have a motion? Um, so my motion would be for there to be a change in where it says four, six, and seven to include a reference to where this is coming. Um, all right. Um, and for changing of whereas eight to be rewarded in a way that doesn't come across as a statement but rather, again, a similar claim. In this case, for example, the rewrite could be uh, that the section six of the expressions of genocidal intent against the Palestinian people by Israeli state officials and others of South Africa's application of genocide case against Renel uh, claims or includes the following claims by Israeli President Isaac Herzog and Prime Minister ben ben Benjamin Netanyahu. So that it's reference to the body or the document that has said so, rather than this body being the one that's making those claims. Um, is that deemed friendly? So I, I do want to pass economics. Um, before I, we deem it friendly or not, I do want to, I mean, I don't know if we can deem it friendly without specific text or not. I don't know if we can make that decision, but I also want to address something. I think this, this is definitely a flaw and I agree with this. Um, 
And I think this is part of what maybe a flaw in the fact that we distributed paper versions. In the digital copy, you can click on these hyperlinks and the source is there. And yeah, this is not ideal, but we base this on previous resolutions that have been passed by the body where that seemed to be sufficient citation. Um, so that, you know, I, I used to do model UN and then back then, you know, we definitely had to cite everything and specify where it came from in the wording. Here, we just use the hyperlinks and maybe I should have foreseen that when we decided to give paper copies, so I apologize. So maybe, I don't know what the norm is in this setting. Yes, okay, that's a good question. So there are no rules. This is, I should clarify. Um, I think that, I, I like when, when we distribute this, I agree that the links will be there. Um, I would make the recommendation that for clarity, maybe we can add, we could um, change the amendment to just also additionally include written citations at the end, like leave these citations, but then just add an appendix at the end with the written out citations, um, just because the chance that this likely may be shared in a way that those hyperlinks get removed. Um, that is not me making a motion because I cannot do that. That is just a recommendation. Um, do you have, um, I, so we're still, I have not resolved the original motion. Um, so um, do you want to change the motion? I want to change my motion. Uh, I would like to change my motion uh, so that uh, where S is for six and seven include a citation and the swing said the citation exists just that there's an, at the end there's a reference list with where the citations go to. However, I maintain my um, uh, recommendation or my motion to change the verbiage of whereas eight uh, in the manner that I said previously, so that it is not read as we're claiming this is a fact, but rather that we're referencing the body that has uh, these uh, information. Um, would that motion be deemed friendly? Oh yeah, this motion, both motions are friendly. All right. Um, I would like us to just go ahead and get that language out potentially. Um, do you feel comfortable rewriting that section so that we can have that formally in, uh, like in the notes? Do you, see, do you know what I'm saying? Well, what would be the best way for me to share that? You just, can just email it to me and then I'll paste it. Okay. In. I have a, I'll have basically like a draft version that I will then edit with your, your edit. Um, and we'll, I will be doing that while we're Perfect. also going through. I'll pretty much just keep all the same words, just rearranging a little bit. Perfect. Perfect. Um, all right. Um, that is the end of your, uh, motion. Who's Isaac is next. Uh, Isaac Weiss, mathematics. Um, I would like to share the concerns of my constituents about this issue um, all week. They've been giving me the runaround whenever I asked them about how they felt about this. And then today, um, sort of the flood wall opened. Uh, and a lot of them are really concerned about passing a resolution like this, not because of any political issue, but they're worried about wasting sort of our political capital on an issue like this. It takes a lot of political capital to uh, then for the rights of graduate students, it takes a lot of political capital to get us a seat to talk about uh, finding a new chancellor. We failed there. It takes a lot of political capital to get us a raise. It took, you know, many, 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 many years. And, and the raise that we got was a minimum raise from $18,000 to $20,000. Um, and a lot of them are worried about the fact that this is not really germane to what we do as a body to uh, fend for the rights of graduate students. And I felt that just how strongly that they talked about it today with me. And it was over 20 different mathematics grad students who came up to me individually to tell me that they really, really are worried about ruining the legitimacy of this body by passing this resolution. Um, three different fifth year grad students came up to me and told me about a resolution that was attempted to pass in this body two years ago in which uh, GPSG would enumerate every single ethnic genocide, uh, in which the three that they named were um, the Spanish flu, COVID-19, and I don't remember the third one, but it, it just, it was another pandemic. Uh, and it really ruined the legitimacy of this body. And uh, I think a lot of them are really worried that that's exactly what we're gonna do again. Um, so 
no political comment about whether or not this is a morally correct thing to do. Uh, it's about whether or not this is a procedurally correct thing to do. And the mathematics department seems to be pretty firm in its belief that this is not a procedurally correct thing to do, regardless of whether or not it's a morally correct thing to do. All right, thank you. Um, who is, you have the list. Okay, yes, William, go ahead. William Boyer uh, for School of Information and Library Science. Uh, I have a minor uh, uh, proposal for an amendment uh, and hopefully it's uh, deemed uh, friendly. Uh, our current dean is listed as one of the members on page six. Uh, we will be getting a new dean in like 20 so days. And so uh, uh, my proposed amendment is to add Jeffrey Bardet, uh, uh, Barnzell uh, as in there as well. He will be the Dean of uh, Information and Library, from the School of Information and Library Science as of April 1st. Yeah. Um, is that motion Dean Friendly? Yes, it is Dean Friendly. All right. Um, I don't know how to spell their name. So you email it to me and I'll pull it up and I'll edit it before we're done. Okay. Um, I see one hand to be added to the list. You got it. Okay, Ellen, you can go ahead on Zoom. Can you hear me? Um, you're, a, uh, ooh, okay, wait, I'm gonna turn you up a little bit. Okay, now try. Okay, can you hear me now? Much better, thank you. Okay, so I just wanted to say um, I'm a Jew. Uh, unit, and please. The main, oh, um, Ellen Reisenberg, Bioinformatics and Computational Biology. So the main form of anti-Semitism that I've been confronted with since October 7th is people assuming that because I'm Jewish, I support Israel committing a genocide. So I think we saw with one of the speakers during Open Forum, many Jews are vocally opposed to the occupation of Palestine. So I just want to say I think it would behoove all of us to avoid assuming that our Jewish constituents would not support this in case anyone's, anyone is tempted to feel that way. Jews are not a monolith. Many Jews, as I mentioned, are vocally opposed to Israel. Um, I also just would like to say that in response to someone a, a couple of speakers ago, I think we can all agree that this is symbolic, but we are all witnessing a genocide and the tide of public opinion is turning. And I think that we can play an important role in making that clear to the powers that be. So I really think that this passing this is the bare minimum that we can do. And it's not outside of our jurisdiction to comment on. Thanks. All right, thank you, Senator. Um, Senator Bakita is next. Uh, this is uh, Senator Bakita from Computer Science. So um, I thank Isaac for addressing a procedural concern that I share, um, but I also have concerns about if we are to pass a resolution on this topic, this is perhaps not the resolution to pass. So I have a story, um, a story of a woman, wife and mother who has made her home in a desert community. A woman whose community has been attacked with mortars, missiles, and drones for approaching two decades now. A woman who taught her children to avoid toys found in fields because they were normally booby-trapped. A woman who paid taxes to supply water, power, and aid to her attackers, those who sent the missiles, mortars, and booby-trapped toys to her children in a hope of peace. A woman I met years ago when visiting the Palestinian territories in Israel and a woman who is now dead, killed in cold blood by those she sought peace with. Our innate sense of justice may call out for vengeance for her death, but more evil does not counter evil. We should not just be calling for a ceasefire and divestment as this is a return to the decades of constant attack that Israeli civilians have suffered. But we should call for lasting peace, justice, and respect for the sanctity of life in Palestine, for the establishment of an independent democratic Palestinian state, and a removal of vengeful evil from both the ranks of Palestinian and Israeli governments. 
This resolution should look forward, not backward, seeking to punish innocent Israeli civilians by withdrawing their defenses and economic support. For these reasons, and the fact that university leadership is not in any position to act on our demands, I move to refer this legislation to committee so that it may be improved to look forward towards lasting solutions and not backwards towards the past. Thank you. All right, so I hear a motion to refer the bill to committee. Um, do I hear a second on the motion? All right, um, here's a second. Um, are there any objections? All right. Um, so, mm -hmm. would you just, uh, Senator Fakita, tell us which committee you'd like to refer this to as it has already been seen by SOGAPs? Um, to refer it back to SOGAPs for the um, uh, change in tone as mentioned. Okay. Thank you, um, All right. Um, okay. So, I'm trying to remember if a motion to refer to committee requires discussion. I know that a motion to table does not. I object. I, we we have objections. We're going to um, one moment. Uh, it is debatable. Yes, it is debatable. Okay. Um. So since there is an objection, we will now move into debate. Thank you about the um, motion. Um. And so now we will do another round of hands raised, specifically about this motion. Um, this is so those of you that raised your hands previously will still be able to be recognized in reference to the general discussion of the bill. Um, did I saw, I think the first hand, there was someone on zoom. Or objections? Or oh, 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 I did. I thought their head, that was a different person. Sorry. Yeah. Um, are you, did you see your, I think I saw Natalia first and then Hashem and then, um, Ellen on zoom. What, was there another hand that I missed? For discussion. Prior to the motion. Yes, but this is a new hands for the discussion of the motion. Sorry, new hands. New hands, yes. Sorry, Robert's rules are fun. Yes, so it's um, different in the room instead of on Zoom. Uh, so yeah, I saw Hashim, Natalia, Ellen, I think is still having her hand up from before. I asked a clarifying question. Okay, Ellen, was your hand raised for your previous um, desire to speak, or is this uh, is this a new hand raise? Sorry, that was from before, but I do object, and I'm happy to talk about why. So, okay, so does that mean you would like to raise your hand to be recognized on the motion? Yes. Um, sure. If that means I object, I don't think I necessarily need to speak, though. Okay, you don't need to raise your hand to object. Just this is just okay, whether or not okay. you wish to speak. All right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I don't need to. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so I, then I believe we're going to go to Hashem first. Um, so this is now discussion on, just to reiterate, we're doing discussion on the motion on whether or not to refer this bill to back to SOGAP's committee. Um, Hashem Amira Economics. Um, I do share Senator Bakita's um, yearning for long lasting peace in the Middle East. Um, I, however, um, I think the urgency of the current situation, uh, the preservation of human life, the ending of the suffering is so pertinent that we do need to act on this specific short term issue. I do, however, encourage Senator Bikita to come up with language that can be looked at at SOGAPS that can perhaps in the future augment this resolution um, and call for a lasting peace. I also would like to point out that this resolution was passed um, with a unanimous vote in SOGAPS as it stands right now. All right, um, and now Natalia. Hi, Natalia Mushigan, Geography. Um, I also just wanted to speak to the urgency of the situation and note that if uh, this resolution is, is basically scrapped in order to write a completely new one and get voted on next month, uh, that is another month in which uh, people are dying, and I don't think that fine-tuning the exact language of a symbolic gesture is worth uh, that additional month. Thank you. That was everyone, right? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, I see one more hand uh, in the back. I can't read your name tags, so you'll have to tell me. Hi, uh, Leo Hirsch, Linguistics. Um, I would just like to add on to the other speakers um, addressing Senator Bikita's concern that the resolution looks to the past. 
uh, that the entirety of the resolution revolves around the past uh, seven months to a year. Um, and so this, the concern about looking to the past rather than the future does not seem pertinent to the current uh, proposed form of the resolution. All right, is there anyone else um, that I have missed that wants to be recognized? All right, um, that will end discussion. We're now gonna move to vote on the motion of whether or not to, to send this resolution back to SOGAF's committee. Um, we're gonna start by trying to do hands. Um, and then if I can't get a good read, then we're gonna do a roll call vote. Um, for those of you on Zoom. Okay, you do, okay, oh, perfect. Okay, um, so we will start. So your options will be um, I, nay, and abstain. I would like to remind everyone, if you have a co-senator, only one senator from your unit can vote on this. So if you have a co-senator in the room or a co-senator on Zoom, do not double vote, like text them or figure out what you're gonna say. I'll give everyone a moment to do that. Only one per unit. Yes, no, okay. Um, so we will now say all in favor of, uh, of tabling this bill, uh, please raise your hand. Oh, sorry, my mistake, of referring to committee, please raise your hand. And zoom. All right, um, all of those opposed, please raise your hand. I believe it's a two thirds. Oh, okay, just kidding. Okay. Um, um, all that choose to abstain, please raise your hand. All right. Um, so that motion will fail. Okay. Um, yeah, and as a reminder, if you can raise your hand using the raise hand feature and not by saying in chat, the chat is, it's just too hard for us to manage. So please use the raise hand feature. Um, Okie dokie. Um, now, it, uh, okay. Um, so we will now continue down the speaker list. Um, now that the motion has failed, the original speaker list. So Natalia, you'll, you can go ahead. Thank you so much. I just wanted to congratulate uh, the senators for an incredibly uh, clear, well-written, re well-referenced as well resolution. And I'm very excited to work, uh, vote in favor. All right. Um, do we have anyone else on the list? Okay, Hashem, you can go now. Hashem Amir Economics. Um, I would like to address Senator Isaac, sorry, I couldn't remember the last name, um, concerns um, about political capital. I do, I do, you know, this is kind of a, an issue that we do address and we think about. Um, I do think that the gravity of the situation is so severe. And the fact that the United States plays a key role the United States is the only country who has been voting against resolutions for a ceasefire. Um, the fact that we live in this country and we are an institution that is prominent in this country, that using our political capital on something like this is of value because of the urgency and the suffering that this country is contributing to. Thank you. Joshua Bikita, Computer Science. So. If this is such an urgent issue, why do we not care about the near 400,000 people who have now died in the Ukraine-Russia war? 
that I address, ask as a rhetorical question, but since we will not have time to address this in committee, I will list some of the itemized technical issues with the resolution as pr at present um, and amendments there too. Uh, so first of all, in um, section eight, um, if the point of this resolution is to alleviate suffering, I believe that section eight is not germane to that um, end as the affordance of US military aid to Israel ha is what has enabled them to defend themselves from the near 20,000 rockets now that have been fired indiscriminately at Israeli civilians over the past 20 years and continue to this day, as well as has afforded Israel the ability to do targeted rather than indiscriminate strikes. Um, and so the suspension of military funding to Israel would likely result in far greater death than we have now and would also remove all ability for the United States to dictate policy and the protection of civilians to um, Israeli military leaders. Um, there are further problems with this resolution, but um, I would like to make a motion to strike section eight. All right, um, Yasmin, you're gonna be next. You can go ahead. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize there was a motion. Please, um, we, I, I was trying to do too many things. Can you re repeat the motion for me? Yes, the motion is to strike section eight. Strike section eight, okay. Um, is this deemed friendly? Oh, uh, no. Um, all right, um, do I hear a second on the motion? Second. Okay, a second. Um, are there objections? Okay, there's an objection. Um, okay, we will now move into, um, I think, discussion of the amendment. Um, so if you would like to, uh, if you'd like to be recognized to discuss the amendment, please raise your hand. Um, and those on Zoom, please raise your hand. If, if, if you can put your hand down on Zoom, we'll, we'll make sure we get you um, when we move into something like this. Um, I, I don't want to try to accidentally double recognize anyone that didn't want to be. Um, OK, um, I see Hashem is the only hand that I see. So you can be recognized. Um, thank you. Um, regarding Senator Bakita's amend proposed amendment to strike um, Section 8, um, this is not meant, this is meant to be a response to Israel's misuse of its weapons. Um, the US, this is not calling for a suspension that is the, 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 the stopping of all time. This is a suspension. A suspension, the wording implies temporariness. And that is until Israel changes course. Um, I would, we would be open to language that perhaps qualifies it, that you know we could reassess this just like we do in section four, um, that we could revisit this based on how the situation evolves. But this is a key part of the resolution because the US's contributions of weapons to Israel is currently not maintaining peace, but encouraging more death and destruction. Thank you. I would like to um, amend my motion then to, rather than striking section eight, to call on a suspension of all offensive military funding. Um, is that motion now amended deemed friendly? Um, can I motion for a one minute recess? So address it with my Sure, authors. we can. Motion for a one minute recess. For a one minute recess. Second. Um, is there a second, um, any objections? An objection, um, okay. Um, we'll now vote on that. So um, all in favor of a one minute recess, please raise your hands. All right, um, please put your hands down. All opposed, please raise your hand. One. All right, um, okay, that's two. Um, 
Yes, and any abstentions, please raise your hand. One. All right, um, that motion for a one minute recess uh, uh, now passes. We uh, will now be in recess and for one minute, we'll set a timer um, and we will be back in one minute. All right, that is the end of the one minute recess. Um, we are now returning to session. Um, so we now come back to the question, is the motion uh, deemed friendly? It is not deemed friendly. All right, um, the motion is not deemed friendly. Um, so the original motion, just to clarify, was to add um, the word offensive, correct, before military funding. That was the exact motion, Joshua? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, do I hear a second? A second. Um, so because it's not team friendly, we're not going to vote on it. So I'm now list, um, asking for a second on that motion. Okay, hearing none, the motion fails. Oh, I didn't see you. Sorry. Okay, I have a second. Um, any objections? Um, all right, um, we now can start discussion on this amendment. Um, I see Duncan first, Hashem again. Was there a hand over here that I missed? No, okay. I'm seeing hands out of the corner of my eye. Okay. Um, Duncan, you can go ahead and be recognized. Uh, hello everyone, uh, Duncan McLean, Physics and Astronomy. Um, I'm the chairperson of the SOGAPS committee, which uh, previously looked at and recommended this resolution. And I, I do think that um, I have broad agreement with a lot of, with, you know, with, of course, with the, um, with the sentiment behind the motion and with uh, a lot of the operative clauses, but I would consider, I would urge the, um, the sponsors of the, um, of the resolution to consider that, to consider the, um, the amendment, excuse me, the motion to amend by Senator Bikita uh, friendly here. I think that qualifying this doesn't really undercut the core message of the resolution. And it sets an important line that this resolution is not calling for any kind of destruction or ill to befall Israel. Rather, this is looking for a change in order to in order to convince, you know, in the world where this resolution were to be adopted and followed through upon, we would want to convince the Israeli government to change course and look towards a solution that ends further bloodshed. I think that that I think that this this amendment would be helpful in that and not destructive. And so I would urge you to consider that. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Um, uh, you can go ahead, Hashem. I think you, you were next. Wait, that's right. Yes. Okay. Um, Hashem, I'm here in economics. Um, so my objection is not, our objection is not to the idea of stopping specifically um, offensive aid per se. Um, I think it's just the vagueness of that. Um, you know, the Israeli military is called the Israeli Defense Forces, and now international organizations are very confident that the Israeli Defense Forces are committing atrocities. Um, Unless Senator Bakita has a list of weapons that will be permissible and wants to add to the resolution, then I don't think this resolution, this wording is just simply too vague. Uh, as I was referenced, I'm able to reply. Um, the idea behind offensive here is you think about a legislative body, generally laws include vague terminology of which expert boards are used to determine the meaning thereof. The legislation describes the sort of philosophical direction. And in accord with what um, I think Duncan said it very nicely, the, the reasoning, I think it would be helpful to add that. Yes, we call our own military, the it's run by the Defense Department, but no expert in their right mind would say that, you know, all spending of the Defense Department is defense. Uh, 
Um, Leo, go ahead. you're recognized. Uh, Leo Hirsch, linguistics. Um, I would just like to point out that I don't believe there are line items in the military budget on which funds are being used for offense and which for defense. Um, I do believe though that's a commingled fund for most uh, states in existence. So I don't understand how the addition of this um, would provide anything meaningful as we don't separate our aid based on offensive and defensive budgetary allotments. Um, so I would urge us to move on from this motion. All right, reject it. All right, Hashem. Okay. Hashem, your economics. Um, I also would like to point out that if, if a country is convinced that a certain nation is committing war crimes or even genocide, there needs to be an action that has a maximum impact. Um, you know, we can disagree on whether Israel is committing genocide or not. I think it'd be very hard to argue that Israel is not committing war crimes. Um, and if a country is committing war crimes at a very large scale, there needs to be a maximum pressure to stop these war crimes. And perhaps a threat of even the banning of defense weapons can actually achieve that. I just would like to point that out. Thank you. Um, it's it's moot because we're going to vote anyway. Um, so, uh, okay, we will now um, end discussion. We will vote on uh, the motion in order to, um, just to reiterate, the motion is to add the word offensive in front of military funding in section eight of the bill. Um, uh, I will now ask all in favor, please raise your hand. All, all in favor of the change. Yeah, so I'm, I'm asking all in favor of the motion, which is to add the word offensive in front of military funding. Um, please raise your hand. Um, all opposed, please raise your hand. Um, all right, hands down, all opposed, or sorry, um, all abstentions, please raise your hand. Okay, I think we're going to need to do a roll call vote on this one. Um, I think it's too close. Um, so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to go through and call the name of every unit and you please respond with I, nay, or abstain. Um, do, do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? I'll read it. Okay. Um, accounting. Nay. Nay. Uh, advanced dental education. I see they're not here. Um, anthropology. Nay. Nay. Uh, biochemistry and biophysics. Abstain. Bioinformatics and computational biology. Nay. Nay. Biological and biomedical sciences, BBSP. Biology. Nay. Nay. Biomedical and health informatics, MPS. Nay. Biomedical engineering. Uh, biostatistics. Uh, business in administration PhD. Aye. Uh, bu business administration MBA. Okay, I assume they're absent. Um, we'll, we'll come back and double check this actually. Um, cell biology and physiology. Abstain. Chemistry. Um, 
uh, city and regional planning. Classics. Aye. Communication studies. Aye. Computer science. Aye. Dentistry. Dramatic art. Economics. Education? Nay. Environmental Sciences and Engineering Gillings? Nay. Epidemiology? Nay. Genetics and Molecular Biology? Nay. Geography? Nay. I think it's on the next page. Uh, geological sciences, uh, Germanic and Slavic languages and literature, global studies, health behavior, okay. health policy and management. Aye. History. Abstain. Human movement science. Nay. Information and library science. Law. Uh, linguistics. So, oh. oh, go ahead. I'm so sorry. Uh, for law, we'll vote nay. Thank you. Uh, marine sciences. Nay. Maternal and child health. Mathematics. Abstain. Media and journalism. Media and journalism. Medicine. Hi. Microbiology and immunology. Microbiology and immunology. Uh, musicology. Nutrition. Occupational therapy. Nay. Pathology. Uh, pharmaceutical sciences, PhD. Pharmacology. Uh, pharmacy, PharmD. Say that again? Nay. Nay. Thank you. Philosophy. Philosophy. Right. Uh, physics and astronomy. Aye. Political science. Political science. Public administration. Nay. Nah. Public health leadership. Abstain. Public policy. Nay. Nah. Rehabilitation, counseling, and psychology. Rehabilitation, counseling, and psychology. Uh, religious studies. Religious studies. Hey, sorry. You okay? Um, can you repeat that? Nay. Thank you. Uh, romance studies. Abstain. Sociology. Sociology, uh, statistics and operations research. Statistics and operations research. Uh, toxicology, PhD. Nay. 
All right, um, will you count those for me? A quick point of order for the tally as well. Um, we have an I vote from uh, city and regional planning that was only sent in chat, may not have been captured through the voice vote. Okay. okay. It was I from city and regional planning. All right, that motion is 10 ayes, 26 nays, seven abstentions, and the motion will fail. All right, um, are we, do we have anyone else on the speaker list, the original speaker list? Um, yes, Luke, do you have a question? Yeah, quick point of clarification. Um, we have a message from uh, David Kikajian, uh, our postdoctoral representative, uh, pointing out that their unit was not called for this. Um, I don't. That is true. I did not call their unit. Um, I don't believe that David has confirmed with me, though, that anyone has been appointed to that position. So I wasn't aware that there would be someone from that unit today. Um, you can email me if the, if you think that that's not right. But I'm I don't think I got any confirmation that anyone was elected. So I haven't done anything um, with that. Um, but I do agree that technically postdoctoral uh, representative should have been added as like you can just amend it at the end um, technically. Um, all right, um, so we now have the, the um, Hashem and then Yasmin on the original speaker list, so we will now go to Hashem. Hashem Amir Economics. Um, first, I would like to point out that the Russia-Ukraine conflict is not germane to this debate. Um, but I also would like to point out that the civilian casualties in that conflict are nowhere near comparable to the atrocities we are witnessing today. Um, but I am for peace. And if Senator Bikita would like to co-author legislation regarding the Ukraine-Russia war, I would be very happy to work with him on that. All right. Um, yeah, Yasmin, you're next. You can be recognized on Zoom. Um, hi, my name is Yasmin Shrafi. I'm a sender for marine sciences. Um, I want, would like to voice my support for this resolution and say personally, I was thrilled to see this um, presented before the Senate. Um, and I wanted to address a couple critiques that were made uh, previously by other senders regarding um, the bill. Um, specifically, I'd like to address why um, it's, it is in fact appropriate um, for the Graduate Student Senate to um, address the genocide occurring in Gaza and for us to do so in this way. Um, and so there are three main reasons. Um, first is that we are a prominent public institution and um, our government, the US government, um, has been directly complicit um, in preventing a ceasefire. So the US is the only country that has vetoed um, a ceasefire resolution in the United Nations three times right now. Um, and um, that's something that is specific to this issue and um, is different from Ukraine, Russia, or um, any other um, potential um, conflict. Um, secondly, um, universities in the US have had a long history of student advocacy. Um, we have always had student activism um, regarding um, cases of violence that were supported by the US government. This includes in the cases of um, Vietnam, Korea, and of course, apartheid and divestment um, activism around South Africa. Um, so um, we also have a precedent that's mentioned in the bill specifically regarding voting um, for divestment um, as part of the anti-apartheid movement um, for South Africa. Um, so this would not be unprecedented. This, is, um, this bill is actually quite in line um, with the history of student advocacy, both at UNC and um, generally at um, universities across the US. 
Um, and finally, um, Hashem already uh, mentioned this, but I just want to reiterate that um, the extremity of the current situation also creates a moral imperative um, for all of us to use whatever um, platform or ro role we have to um, bring attention and call for a ceasefire. Um, the United Nations, WHO, Amnesty International, the Red Cross, Doctors Without Borders, and numerous other um, neutral, multilateral, third-party organizations have documented that the rate of um, killing of children and targeting of civilians in Gaza is higher than we've seen in any other case of modern warfare, warfare or in any other um, modern conflict. And so I think that the um, disproportionality of the current situation also um, calls for our attention. Um, thanks so much for your time and attention. Great, thank you, Senator. Next, Natalia, you are now recognized. Hi, Natalia Mushigan from Geography. Um, I wanted to address a concern that was raised by constituents from mathematics to their senator uh, about a past resolution having weakened the legitimacy of GPSG. Given that we are a body that is still meeting, hearing from administrative representatives every month and um, are the first point of contact that administration turns to on grad student issues, I fail to see how past attempts at passing moral resolutions has weakened our position or legitimacy. Yeah, you can, do you want to uh, respond? Yeah, I can take two seconds to respond. Sure. Did um, they listen you're... to us? No, that's why we don't have uh, a person helping us find the the new chancellor. I, you know, um, first, I, I really very quickly want to thank uh, Wynn, Hashem, and Nissa for sort of putting this together. It's very clearly- I think I'll say, oh. so is this in response to the question or-, or I, are we I, re I responded to the previous center. I am, yes. My mistake. You I, are the next speaker. Am I am I good? Please continue. Okay, wonderful. Uh, where was I? Uh, I want to thank Wynn, Hashem, and Nissa for clearly putting together a very well researched and very well put together document. Um, I have a technical question about the thing, which I hope I can get just a very quick response and then continue speaking. Um, so, uh, just out of my own personal curiosity. Um, you know, we talk about divesting from uh, Israeli businesses, military, so on and so forth. That's section four. Uh, do we know if the university is actively currently engaged in this, or is this just something to say? Um, I'll say that's a, a question how, if the authors want to respond. You can be recognized. Um, as far as I am aware, the university is invested in companies that do do business with the Israeli government. I am unaware whether or not the university is invested in any Israeli firms. Presumably through some index funds, they are. There are um, Israeli firms on the S&P 500. So presumably, yes. Um, but also there's a lot, there's very little transparency about how UNC invests its money as well. All right, Isaac, you can continue. Okay, wonderful. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. I, I, just my own personal curiosity. Um, I have a comment from one of my constituents um, asking me to sort of rebut what Hashim said earlier about his rebuttal to me, uh, which is to say that, yes, there is a sort of moral imperative, um, but given that we are certainly not what Joe Biden is waiting to hear from in order to, you know, do a ceasefire and that they've been doing this, is it worth wasting our political capital? Is that a rhetorical question? That is a rhetorical question. Anyone's welcome to answer that. Hashim is also welcome to answer it. But one of my constituents asked me to specifically right. I just say that. To check if it was a specific question or a rhetorical question. Nope. Okay. Did you get Savini? Did you get Savini before that? Oh, I see. To this. I was assuming because it's rhetorical, it's not a question. So we're in the Yeah, I, you know, I, I have actually not talked to you. Is it Davini or Devini? Can you tell me how to pronounce your name correctly? On Zoom? It's De Devine Franklin. Devine, I, my apologies. Um, you are recognized to speak. Uh, I don't have anything additional to add. Okay. Um, yes, you were right. You were referenced. Katie, so sure. Can I, you, um, I would like um, to make give a motion. motion. 
Yes, I sure. Do. Can I motion that we table this bill until the end of the legislative session so that we can get to the other bills that are before this body that need uh, resolutions on? Okay, um, so the motion is to delay the discussion of the bill until the end of the meeting so that discussion on the other bills can uh, occur. Um, do I hear a second? Um, any objections? Objections? All right. Um, there is no discussion, I believe, on tabling, so um, we will just go into a vote. Um, we'll start with hands first. Um, all in favor of tabling the bill into the end of this meeting, um, please raise your hand. Um, all right, thank you. Um, all opposed, please raise your hand. Um, please lower your hands. Um, any uh, abstains? Uh, please raise your hand. Two, three. Oh, no. Um, all right, I believe that motion fails. Can I make a motion to move to limit debate five minutes on the remainder of this bill? Um, all right, so the um, motion is to limit debate uh, to five minutes on the remainder of the bill. Um, do second. I hear a second? All right, um, do I have an objection? Hear an objection? All right, um, five minutes total. Um, wait, is this one a majority? Point of order. Um, uh, there is no debate on this motion. Um, point of order. Do you have a point of order? You can actually ask a question. Um, am I correct that a limiting of the debate actually needs to limit how many speeches per speaker and length of time for a speaker, or can we do a, just a flat length? Not, not that I'm opposed to it, I'm just... Yeah, so the motion is to limit the total amount of debate to be five minutes. Um, it does not limit speaker time, um, I believe. So, um, yes, so um, we will now, there is no discussion on this, so we will now vote. Um, all in favor of limiting debate to five minutes, please raise your hands. Um, all, uh, please lower your hands. All opposed, please raise your hands. Three. All right, um, please lower your hands. Um, all abstain, please raise your hands. None. Um, all right, that passion uh, pa pa motion passes. Um, Okay, um, so we will now limit debate to five minutes. Um, Megan, um, you are now recognized as the next speaker. I don't know where you are in the room over here. Yes. Megan from Romance Studies. This is an editorial thing. Um, so ninth whereas section um, in the written on page three in the written one, but not, and I guess page three on there. On the first line, you say war crimes since October 7th, 2023, including but limited to. It should either say including and limited to or including but not limited to. Um, do you want to make a motion to make that change to include something one or the other? Um, I move to either say including and limited to or including but not limited to since I'm not quite sure what you were going for. But not limited to is friendly. All right, um, we will make that change, but not limited to. Um, Joshua, you can be recognized. Uh, thank you. 
So um, I wanted to come back to the technical question that Isaac was asking about divestments. Um, so this would require saying um, some companies that do business with the Israeli government would include Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Nvidia, AMD, and most of the Fortune 500. And so such divestment would require selling the majority of the holdings, um, likely of the endowment, it would significantly limit our exposure to returns. For example, one of the best returning Stocks in recent time has been NVIDIA, of which a significant division of theirs is based in Israel. Um, uh, and so I wanted to note that that is what we are asking the university to do in section four. Um, all right, Hashem, you can be recognized. Am I responding specifically to that question or? You're also next um, in the order, so okay. either way. Thank you. Um, specific, specifically to that question, um, yes, that is what we're asking the university to do. And part of it is that there needs to be a shift, I think, in how these companies behave that, you know, if there is a charge of genocide, countries should be reconsidering, companies should be reconsidering where they should, whether they should be doing business with a government that is committing war crimes. So yes, that is the intention. Um, the university, we do believe if this becomes something that universities and companies start doing where they start pulling back slowly from companies that are the most egregious. So, you know, Google does provide um, AI algorithms that have been used, AI systems and cloud platforms that have been used to run the algorithms that the Israeli army has been using to target civilians. So the university could start from there and then that could slowly push companies to actually withdraw these businesses with the Israeli government. So yes, that is part of it. Um, responding to the idea that like about our political clout, um, I do wonder, did they listen to us before? I think, you know, even before that bill was passed, I don't think anything has changed. I assume it, we didn't listen to us back then before or after. I don't know that for a fact, but that's what I would assume. Um, I honestly cannot remember Senator Isaac's other point, but I'm just gonna digress. There was a question, but okay. When is next? When of our health behavior, um, just to respond to Isaac, um, myself and other people in health behavior vehemently disagree with the idea that speaking out against war crimes would be a waste of our energies in general. All right. Joshua, um, you have a minute and 14. Yes, um, uh, to reply to Hashim asking if this has been effective. Yes, DPSG has been very effective in increasing stipends, increasing graduate representation. And all of this has been done through extremely close collaboration with the chancellor's office, the provost's office, dean's offices. And those that work has led to concrete, meaningful improvement for graduate students. Spending our capital to advocate for something that the university cannot actually do is a waste and will make it harder to increase stipends, will make it harder to address mental health issues, will make it harder to generally complete the work of GPSG to improve the state of graduate and professional students on campus at UNC. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, yes, I mean, we were able to do this after that resolution was passed by, that Isaac had mentioned. And I also would like to say that this is not specifically about getting the US government to respond to us directly. This is also about moving public opinion and showing that there is That's time. a lot of push. Sorry, thank you. Um, I do wanna just mention, um, we are now ending discussion. Um, I do wanna mention that I did receive the language for the previous motion. Um, that should be now on the screen. Um, struck is uh, up in the first paragraph and the new language is here in blue. Obviously the, um, I'll add in later the um, hyperlinks. Um, I do want to, we are out of discussion, but I do uh, feel I wanna check with this um, motion not being completely resolved. Um, and so uh, I just want to check with the author that this motion is still friendly basically. Where will you say it again? Yeah, right. Here. Oh, the okay. 
Is, is that okay with you, Fernando? Okay, I thought so. I just wanted to check. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Okay, no worries. Cool, I just, we didn't address it and I wanted to make sure it was addressed. Um, thank you. Okay, so we are now ending discussion on, I already, I forgot, 54-030. Uh, um, we will now move on to our next piece of legislation. Um, oh, I also wanna add, I did get that other amendment um, that was uh, adding the name of the new dean is also added to the end of this um, document. Okay. Um, okay, we're now going to move on to 54-031, um, an act to fund travel awards for cycle six, close February 24th, 2024. Um, I'll ask um, Senator Nick Melosi if you want to introduce this bill. Hi, everyone. This is Senator Nick Melosi, Health Policy and Management. This is our general uh, travel award bill. We received 31 applications for this cycle, um, of which we are awarding 18 awardees totaling $7,600 for their travel. Um, we've deferred four off to the next cycle since their travel was further along, um, and we've only not funded nine this cycle. Um, with that, our remaining budget for the rest of the semester is uh, $7,637. And um, I think we are in good shape to be able to fund um, a large chunk of the incoming ones that we have, but we do have a large number of them coming in. So with that, I will happily take any questions that anyone might have. Um, are there any questions? Go ahead. Hi, this is Natalia Mushigan, uh, Geography. I uh, don't have a question about this bill, but I had a question for the Travel Awards Committee in general about uh, funding for uh, awards in the summer. Um, do I, I saw that Travel Awards have to be funded um, students have to be enrolled in the semester for which they're funded and I had a constituent ask if that means that they had to be registered in the summer to receive travel awards for travel in like June. I think when it comes to June, I don't think that necessarily has, so long as they're an active student, meaning that they'll be returning in the fall as a student, I believe that that would be acceptable as most people don't take summer classes. Um, I would have to check for certain on that, but I'm pretty certain on that one. We funded other people um, prior to this who have been traveling for conferences that occur in the summer. And I know a good chunk of conferences occur in June, July, and August before we're back in session um, as students. So I think they should be okay. And I believe Great, the deadline you. for them to apply would be March 15th. Um, I saw your email. I'll double check that that's true. Also, I haven't forgotten about it. It's just right before Senate. It's yeah, Katie, to get to I, I think things. we've we've cleared this before because that's been a question that has been raised before. And I think summer session is one of those things where it's like there's still an act. I think it mainly it pertains to people who graduate in like May and then are moving on so that this way they, they don't receive funding when they're no longer a student. Perfect. Um, thank you so much. Um, are there any other questions on the travel awards bill? All right. Oh, yes, please go ahead. Hi, um, Kendall Winter Musicology. Um, just to help out with this question on the floor about eligibility, um, we have an appendix in the code that discusses travel award cycles. I'm on R&J, so I've been like reading the code. Um, but <laughs> for travel occurring from uh, May 1st through June, the deadline is April 1st. Uh, for travel in July and August, you must apply by August 1st. Those review cycles are conducted by summer governance and subject to confirmation by the incoming Senate in September. And I want to read this quote directly because I think it really addresses the, um, the question at hand. Um, for eligibility, quote, must be enrolled in the spring semester for travel from January through June or the fall semester for travel from July through December. So that's answering that question about, will you be returning in the fall that pertains to travel happening um, in July or August? Thanks. All right, perfect. Um, seeing no other questions, we will move on. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, we'll now move to 54-032, external appointments charter. Um, 
And I believe Abigna is the uh, author on this one. So if you want to introduce this, Bill. Cool. Yes, I can. Hi, everybody. Introduce yourself. Oh, yes. Hi, I'm Abigna. I serve as the chief of staff. Um, and so this is an amended version of the external appointments charter that you all reviewed in the fall. Um, part of the role of the chief of staff is to appoint a number of graduate and professional students to the various seats we have on um, various councils, committees um, across campus that are partnered with GPSG. Um, so the, um, the three types of amendments you'll see in this bill are first and foremost, and the largest type is um, new additions to seats that were still vacant from the fall or appointments to new external appointments that were identified. Um, Cause every year we have a few new ones uh, that, come, that come in. Um, another type of amendment, um, you'll see an example of this on um, the third line alcohol policy task force. Um, these are ex uh, exchanges in who is serving on the specific appointment. So we have one or more students appointed but the previous person stepped back and someone else stepped into the role. And then the third type is you'll just see a strike in the record um, in line two um, and line four is an example of that. What this is, is that the appointment was identified as a positional responsibility or an ex officio appointment. Those are still filled, but don't belong in an external appointments charter. So I took it out. Um, and then the one other thing that I added to this charter that was not there in the previous one in the fall are descriptions of all of the external appointments so that all of you are aware of what these, just basically generally at a high level, what these students are doing and how they are serving on all of these roles. So that's the gist of this document, pretty straightforward. Um, it was reviewed by the ONA committee earlier this week. Um, and so you'll see those votes at the top. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. All of these students have submitted applications for these roles reviewed by me, um, resumes as well. So I have full confidence that um, they are all serving and fulfilling all of the roles of their positions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? Um, I see uh, Senator Bikita's hand. Go ahead. Hi, Joshua Bikita, Computer Science. Um, a big nut for the Safety and Security Committee, which I understand we previously had no appointments on and it was unable to meet. Do you know what the status of the committee now is that we have appointees to that committee? Uh, yes, that is correct. Um, the, the students that you see listed under uh, the Student Safety and Security Committee are were either appointed after the um, passing of the charter last fall up until this point. So I hope that clarifies. Uh, specifically, I'm interested if you know when, if the committee will receive funding requests this spring. I am not aware of that information. That would be a question that you can pass through me for me to ask either the chair of that committee or the students who are serving on that committee right now. Thank you. Great. Any other questions? Go ahead. Hi, uh, Kendall Winter Musicology. My question is about the um, the positions that were struck from the executive uh, appointments charter on the grounds that they are ex officio roles associated with other executive officers. Um, as we're all concerned about um, knowledge, institutional knowledge, I'm just wondering, do we know for sure that these types of appointments are written down somewhere else so that, for example, um, the person who succeeds Daliana in her role will know that it is their responsibility to on the administrative board of the library, for example. Uh, yes, so this will be documented in uh, yeah. a couple yeah, of places. Oh, 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 yeah. Can you mute please on Zoom? Oh, sorry, I didn't know if that was a question. Um, yes, so uh, Lauren and I, uh, Lauren President um, and I work together to identify these. So they are either in the code, um, they they will also be noted in the mid-year report, I believe, um, and in the transition reports that all officers are charged with writing at the end of the year. So whoever is succeeding this position um, will be notified by the predecessor that 
that is um, one of the duties that they'll be charged with. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, any other questions on this? Uh, yeah, Joshua, go ahead. Yeah, just a quick amendment. Uh, it says 2023 in a lot of places throughout the bill. I believe that should read 2024. Um, would that be accepted as a friendly amendment? Yes. <laughs> I'll fix it afterwards. Thank you. I thought I caught some of them, but I didn't get all of them. Okay. Um, seeing no other questions, we will move on. Uh, 254-033, increase town hall budget. Was it enact to increase the town hall budget? Um, Isaac, do you want to introduce this bill? Yeah, Isaac Weiss Mathematics. I'll do this very quickly because I think you're sick of hearing me for, from me tonight. Uh, town halls cost money. You keep asking for money. I need $962.39. Thank you very much. Love it. Um, any questions? Yeah, Riley, go ahead. Uh, I know that I think February 23rd, the town hall funding application closed. So is the $962 just to fund the applications you already received? Yes, I, I need $962.39, please. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Awesome. Okay, last bill, right? Yes, um, will be 54-034, Appropriations March. Uh, Riley, do you wanna introduce this? Yes, um, so this is just our March Appropriations Bill. We received three applications and we spent $5,562. Um, we now have a remaining balance from our last meeting um, of $29,438 um, for our last month of appropriations. Great, any questions? I can tell y'all are itching to be done. Okay, I think that is all of our legislation for the day. Um, so we will now move into voting. Um, I know there are a few people that have told me that they have had issues voting and I feel like I emailed you, but I'm not sure I did. Is there anyone that is concerned they do not have the ability to vote? And can you please speak up so we can make sure we get your vote tonight? I guess do that in a moment when we get to that. Um, um, Luke, can you, I think the ballot should be good. Um, I would like to make a, um, an announcement sort of about the ballot. I did make a small change uh, to the ballot uh, and that is to ask for the name of the person voting at the beginning of the ballot. This is not going to be recorded anywhere. This will not be recorded on the legislative log. I will throw away this information. The reason is because I've had a couple of units get votes that don't have senators. And I don't know how the, if someone's making a mistake in clicking what's happening. And so it, just to make sure that a unit is actually being voted on by the person that is the senator, I'm asking for your name. But just as a reminder, your name will not be recorded in association with the votes on legislation. So this is just for me to figure out what the heck's going on. Um, so Luke, let us know when that, uh, is that live? Okay. I'll pause for Katie. Question Harris. for you. Uh, mm -hmm. First and last. Same. I don't. It doesn't matter. What? Whatever you. It just so I know who who is voting. Maybe don't make up a name. Preferably your name would be good. Um, okay. Let me reshare my screen. Okay, so we are gonna go through updates while everyone has the opportunity to vote. Um, we already heard, oops, we get presentation mode. Ah, sorry, one moment. There we go. Um, we already heard from uh, GPC President Lauren Hawkinson. We already heard from Student Body President Chris Everett. Um, so we're now going to move into standing committee chair updates. Um, we will start with oversight and accountability. Um, do we have any updates from ONA? I think Z maybe wasn't here tonight. Um, do you want to give the updates maybe instead? If that's okay. I think have at it. I don't think Z's here. Uh, William Boyer uh, from St uh, School of Information and Library Science. Um, this last time we met and spoke on 
uh, some more of the uh, standing committee uh, information and uh, also one other uh, element that I is passing my mind at the moment. I'm sorry, it's quite late. That's okay. Um, but we believe it was a formality uh, that it was going through us because it was going to happen anyway. Uh, and we, at last count, uh, it passed with three eyes. Uh, correct me on that. I think four eyes, but okay. <laughs> Even better. All right, um, thank you so much. I'm sorry to put you on the spot there. Um, Duncan, do you wanna give the SOGAPS update? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Duncan McLean, Physics and Astronomy. The SOGAPS committee um, continues to work with the Hawkinson administration uh, in actively drafting language for the uh, Graduate and Professional Student Bill of Rights, which is uh, still in progress. And we're hoping to bring something to the Senate uh, by next month's meeting to uh, get this uh, enshrined and passed off so that the Graduate Student Experience Initiative can uh, do something concrete with it. Um, we're also preparing for uh, to go through a lot of town hall reports. We've received 22 of them so far. We're still waiting for a fair number in the next couple of days. And we will uh, be looking at those and sending them off um, for allocations. And um, that's all we basically have at the moment. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, also, if anyone has questions, just raise your hand um, as we, we go through these. Um, Nick, do you want to do travel awards? Yeah, I think I gave most of my updates, so we'll be quick on this. Nothing new unless anyone has a question. All right, good stuff. Appropriations. Um, I just want to say that our, I don't know what it says on Hill Life, but our final, um, our final, deadline for applications is gonna be March 25th. Um, usually we're flexible about our deadlines, but we're not gonna be accepting any um, applications after that for this cycle. Awesome, thank you. Questions? Um, r and um, Ben, are you still here? Can give an update? I realize yeah. you're not feeling very well. <laughs> yeah, um, so r and Matt, I think it was a week or two ago, and we're focusing on really two areas. So one was we had a discussion around um, the possibility of changing meeting times for next year. Many of you probably saw there was some discourse in the Slack channel about meeting on election day. And the best way to go about um, figuring out what to do for next year was we put together a survey. I'm going to draw. Are you there? Oh, wait. Did you? Oh, we lost you. We lost you right time? after your survey. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, so we, we've developed a survey to get Senator's feedback. Um, I just dropped the survey in the Zoom chat um, and I guess we'll figure out a way to get it to everybody in person. Um, my bad for not planning in advance. Um, anyways, but that survey, I'll put it in the Slack. How about that? Um, I'll put it in the announcements too, so everyone has okay. it. Nice, thank you. Um, but that survey um, basically just asked, what days are you available next year? Um, or what days of the week um, would you be willing to move to two meetings a month? Just sort of a whole comprehensive um, list of questions about what folks think. Um, so that's what we're working on. And we'll be meeting on that at our next meeting to have it prepared for our final meeting of the year. Um, so hopefully we can have something final and approved for next year's uh, legislative calendar. Next, we are working on our annual uh, code audit. Um, we're working on setting up a ske specially scheduled meeting right now. Um, and as soon as we get that meeting date figured out, um, we'll get it disseminated to everyone if anyone's interested in joining. But that's it. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, and I'll make sure that the survey about the Senate date um, goes in the announcements. So I'll rehash all that there. Thank you so much, Ben. I hope you feel better. Um, lastly, finance. Um, is I think Joel is not. Joel is here. not here. Uh, I'm filling in for him. Uh, so finance has been hard at work uh, since the February Senate meeting. The Finance Committee has reviewed 23 town hall funding requests, most of which were funded. Uh, again, I need that 936 bucks. Uh, so at this time, again, we've overspent and, and we just need that money. 
Uh, as a reminder, please remember to submit your reimbursement request via Heal Life. That could take up to four to six weeks, so you might as well do it tonight or the moment that you have the receipts for it. Uh, and your town hall funding reports uh, are due March 9th, 2024. Uh, we have also drafted and continue to revise the 24-25 GPSG Senate operating budget. If you're interested in contributing to the conversations regarding the budget, you're welcome to attend the next finance committee meeting, which is scheduled for Monday, March 18th from 4.30 to 5 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, and with respect to sustainability of the committee, uh, Senator Burkita has kindly drafted a standard operating procedure document for the finance committee. And we are continuing to update the document, which will serve as traditional purposes from uh, year to year. That's everything. If you have questions, email Joel Begay. Uh, you can look up his email on the website. I'm not going to read it out for the document. Awesome. Thank you. Any questions for I missed for any of the committees? OK, good. Um, I do want to share, um, we have some particularly special leadership updates. Um, of course, we have our normal monthly leadership updates from the executive team that you can read. Those are shared on HeLife and on Canvas. Um, but we actually also have a mid-year report that I really recommend checking out. Um, I know that um, our chief of staff um, put a lot of work into making this look good. And um, this includes a uh, basically a full report of everything that happened in the first half of um, this administration from every single cabinet member, every single executive member, um, all of the chairs of all of the standing committees and um, external appointments are also included there as well. Um, it's great, I recommend looking at it. I think we're also gonna try to post it on the website, but we'll get to that later. Um, when I have time to do, when Luke has time, really, uh, to, to work on that. We haven't talked about that yet. Anyway, um, last announcements. I will be brief. Um, if you uh, have not already completed your town hall, town hall reports are due by March 9th. You must have these reports in by March 9th. If you um, want your unit to be eligible for allocation money, the money that we are going to give you at the, end of the, um, at the end of the session, you must do your town hall reports by March 9th. If you don't know what's going on, please send me an email so we can figure out what's going on with you, okay? Um, if you can't find it, if you have a problem, please email me. I will do my best to answer and get everything um, figured out. Um, we have an award um, that we are trying to look for nominations for called the Gwendolyn Harrison Smith Award. Um, Please, if you know someone that you think may be good for this award, please consider nominating someone or you can nominate yourself. Um, we have one nomination, I believe, right now, and I would love to see a couple more. Um, this is a, a really cool award. Um, it's going to be presented at the Graduate School Awards Ceremony um, next month. You get your name on a plaque. It's a really cool award. Um, so please, please consider um, nominating yourself or others. That is going to be due on Friday uh, March 8th. You can find it here. It's also on Heal Life. Um, talk to your constituents. Um, Climate Action Day is going to be on March 7th from 11 to 2. Um, this is, it's going to be located in the pit. Um, this is a large uh, a day that is about basically making connections, getting involved with local environmental organizations um, and other initiatives. It is organized by the Climate Crisis Committee that is um, part of uh, graduate professional student government. So I encourage everybody to attend. Um, that is in two days, I believe. Um, last, um, spring GPSG Senate elections are on March 18th. So if you are one of these units that's listed up here, your elections are going to be happening on March 18th. Um, so that means that um, if you are interested in rerunning for your position, um, you will need to register um, between March 4th and March 8th. So that's yesterday to Friday. Um, and even if you forget to register, um, write in uh, uh, candidates are also allowed on the ballot. Um, if you are not planning to return, I ask, please, 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 please send this information to your constituents um, so that we can try to find someone for next year. Um, if you can help me advertise these things to your constituency, that will help us find some really great candidates for next year. Um, if your name's not up here, your elections are in the fall. Um, our final meeting is gonna be on April 2nd. Um, same room, same time. Um, these are the times for appropriations and travel awards. Um, are there any questions? Um, I, let's hear uh, the uh, totals for the ballot, please.
Great. So I've also gotten some messages over Zoom just to give everyone maybe 10 seconds. Has anyone still not been able to vote? I think everything has been cleared up as far as I know. Everyone been able to vote. Okay, great. Uh, in that case, I'll go through and read off the results. So 54029, a resolution to confirm Elizabeth Cohen passes with 44 yes, one no, one abstain. 54030, Gaza ceasefire and Israel divestment resolution passes with 35 yes, six no, four abstain. 54031, travel awards passes, 44 yes, one abstain, zero no. 54032, which is to amend the general bill 5410 about the EA charter passes unanimously with 45 votes. 54033, the town hall budget increase passes, 42 yes, three no. 54034, appropriations passes, 44 yes, one abstain, zero no. All right, perfect. Um, okay, with that, um, that will, do I hear a motion to adjourn? No. Do I hear a second? And all right. Um, and at 812, um, we will adjourn the meeting. Thank you all so much for just thank you all so much for being respectful and for um, having civil discourse in this meeting today. I really appreciate it. And um, I recognize that we not every day we talk about, um, you know, more, uh, I guess what I'll call more controversial topics. And so I appreciate everyone being kind uh, today. So thank you so much. Um, thank you everyone on Zoom. I will see you in a month. Do your town halls. Bye.